These deeper questions can't be resolved at the level of the mind, but must be entrusted to a different, deeper part of our consciousness. Tai suggests we consider this big question as a seed, plant it in the soil of our mind, and let it rest there. Our mindfulness practice in our daily lives is the sunshine and water that the seed needs to sprout so that one day it will rise up on its own in its own time. We ask our deeper consciousness to take care of it and let go of our thinking and worrying about it. This part of our mind is called store consciousness. So this is a, a Buddhist psychology perspective that's not so unlike other Western or psychological, neurological understandings of our consciousness. There's the background consciousness language in other traditions, but it's this understanding that there is a part of our activity of, of mind that's always operating. It's storing memories and impressions, it's consolidating things so that they, they can be brought up and used in other situations. It's the integrating of our experience that happens when we dream, for instance, or even it's what helps us get from point A to point B when we know the route and our mind is somewhere totally elsewhere, but we still get to the right place because that's our store consciousness that knows, oh, you turn right here and then you go left there. And when we're on a route that we know, that's not our mind consciousness that's getting us there. We're not actually thinking. It's, it's this other part of ourself. We talk about being on automatic pilot, but in some ways it's very helpful that we don't have to use because the mind consciousness uses a lot more juice, <laughs> uses a lot more brain sugar than the store consciousness. The store consciousness is this very efficient, much more effective than the mind consciousness. To walk, you can't think your way, with your mind consciousness, you can't do all the different millions of micro things that happen to move your foot, <laughs> not fall over. That's your store consciousness. That's doing all these things in your body that if you tried to think it through, you would just, your brain would blow up. <laughs> so many things like that happen throughout the day. Our mind consciousness could never keep track of, but the store consciousness can handle just fine. So there's lots that we don't need to think about. Thank goodness, right? We can learn to entrust, to take refuge in this part of ourself that is so capable and knows how to do what it does. But our mind consciousness can work with our store consciousness in a helpful way to be conscious about, oh, here you are, you have this function, I have this function, the things I can't take care of, let me invite you to help me take care of, or things that are too big for me. Instead of what often happens when we can encounter a difficulty is our mind runs itself ragged trying to figure things out. That if we would just let go of for a little bit. So many like scientists have talked about their big discoveries coming when they were in the shower, when they were on a walk, not when they were in the lab, not when they were working that formula. And so it's the same with, uh, with anybody. When we're really tight, when there's a lot that we're trying to figure out, relaxing, letting go of the difficulty or the question, giving more space, leaning back rather than reaching in to kind of leaning forward. All of that gives a lot more possibility to access the wisdom that's already in us. We, we all have incredible wisdom in us, not just from our own lives, but it's Store consciousness contains all of our ancestral wisdom, too. It's why babies are afraid of snakes when they've never seen a snake before. That's the collective consciousness that's in the collective store consciousness. So there's the individual store consciousness, there's the collective store consciousness. So we can rely on it, not just from our own experiences, but from all the experiences of all generations. We have access to that. We're hooked up <laughs> to the big network. And so, so when we, when we stop trying to figure it out, me, as my little self, 
and we let ourselves release and all of this good stuff that's under there can find us and sprout up without any effort and suddenly we have the words that we needed or we have the idea that we needed or something just comes together or we just see it in this other way but it doesn't come from trying so hard and wearing ourselves out but that's how we're taught we're taught to keep trying if it didn't work this way do it that way until we're exhausted and burnt out and we have no creativity no juice left we have to stay juicy for these <laughs> for the beautiful things to come come forth and that means stopping it means letting go it means relaxing it means being more lazy being more pliant and seeing the many possibilities in a situation where we get stuck is when we think oh it has to be this way that's how it will be resolved it has to be this way we don't see the whole picture most of the time and if we come into this place where store consciousness can operate store consciousness sees many possibilities when we open to this other wisdom it's like help can come from so many different directions if we are receptive part of what's important with store consciousness is letting mind consciousness fade to the background a little bit so we can be more receptive with this deeper part of our consciousness that's why when we turn over this question in the form of a seed to store consciousness store consciousness will take care of that it will do its work it is soil if soil will grow a seed if it's fertile soil and our store consciousness is fertile soil so it's part of it is the letting go it's the trusting we have things that are blocks of suffering that need to be circulated so they can heal but we also have incredible wisdom that needs to circulate so that it can be realized and become part of us become part of our mind consciousness our waking interacting understanding it's like mind consciousness needs to know that store consciousness is there that's one of the functions of the spiritual practice or a psychological path and then no start to understand how it works so mind consciousness can work with it to give space to store consciousness to offer what it has to offer us which is to help us integrate and heal these things these blocks of suffering that are things from our childhood things from our parents from our ancestors that are still in our consciousness intergenerational trauma but also intergenerational resilience all that's in our store consciousness it's held down there so quieting the mind honing the mind refining the mind so that we can like a laser we can be precise to to bring our attention to one aspect of ourselves that allows the store consciousness to really help us with both healing and with realizing these deeper truths deeper awarenesses that can really liberate us we really need to befriend store consciousness what happens is people get afraid of it because the monsters are down there right when when we have demons when we have monsters unhealed parts of ourselves they come up in our dreams they come up in a flashback they come up in some compulsive behavior we're like how did i end up doing that what took me over and made me do that say that eat that <laughs> so then we think store consciousness is our enemy and so then we want to make a blockade where store consciousness can't communicate with mind consciousness so then we drink alcohol we have addictions we we escape we fill up our mind consciousness the living room 100% of the time so nothing can break through from store consciousness cuz there are things down there that scare us that we don't think we can handle and that's one definition of trauma is something happened and we didn't have the means 
to hold it, to be with it. People around us didn't know how to help us. The trauma is the response to the original suffering, not the original suffering itself. It's because we didn't have the capacity to be with it that we get traumatized. So that's what's down there in store consciousness, these things that we couldn't be with, that harmed us, or we were harmed by. So mind consciousness can begin to make this journey of saying, hey, there are tools, there are practices, there is a path that can help make it a little bit safer one day at a time for little bits of these scary parts to come up. And if my mind is present, not filled with all these other things, then I can see this part of me that I've been afraid of and see it as suffering and hold it with kindness, with tenderness, just a little bit at a time. And then it goes back to store consciousness less intense, less scary, because I've had a tiny bit of an encounter with it. And so that's the spiritual practice, is to be on a, on a path of working with store consciousness so that these parts that are unintegrated can little by little become integrated, where we feel safe with ourselves, where we learn, okay, there's this block in me, everyone has blocks in them, I'm not bad or wrong. These are things that I need to learn to integrate and become friends with. So we learn to not be afraid of what store consciousness can bring up. Even in dream, that is a field that we learn we can actually cultivate. We can water wholesome seeds that live in store consciousness, that are resting in store consciousness. Every day, we can listen to things that nourish the best in us, that encourage a broader mindset of opening our hearts to people and things that are different from us, of caring about people's suffering, of bringing joy to ourselves and to others, of remaining balanced and still, even in the midst of all the storminess. All those seeds are there in our store consciousness and with our mind consciousness. We can think of it like being a gardener. Mind consciousness can water the wholesome seeds in store consciousness and help care for the seeds of suffering in store consciousness, not suppressing them, not allowing them to take over, but this middle path of taking good care of them, learning about them, befriending them, loving them so that they transform. That's how mind consciousness can really care for the being this good gardener to the soil, to the storehouse of store consciousness.